I have Professor Jason Johnson with us, Professor of Political Science, regular Al Jazeera contributor. I mean, this is a disaster, isn't it, for them? Uh, it is an extreme problem for the Clinton campaign. I do not know if it's going to have enough of an impact uh, that, say, Donald Trump would like. A lot of the early voting has already started across the country. And also, the timing of this is really key. It's the middle of Friday afternoon. That's actually dead time for American press because people are paying attention to sports and other things over the weekend. The Clinton campaign is going to probably have a good 24 hours to try and spin this before the news cycle grabs it on Monday. But with a candidate who's already so tainted by mistrust, there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's the Sunday talk shows. Surely this will have an in impact on those who are at the very least wavering after the latest allegations against Donald Trump. That's a possibility. The catch is this. Most Americans are rock solid in their opinions already. Look, this was going to be a close election. I've always said it's going to be a close election. But if you talk to your average man or woman down the street walking here, maybe not in Washington, D.C., but Cleveland, Ohio, New York City, Raleigh, North Carolina, do they care more about Donald Trump grabbing women or do they care more about Clinton's emails? They're going to remember Donald Trump grabbing women more. So this appears to be an investigation as to whether she mishandled classified information once again. In the past, the FBI has decided she, she, she misjudged, perhaps, Perhaps. Although, I mean, I was talking to Democratic strategists like several months ago, and they said that this was their biggest fear because they, they themselves were always aghast that she managed to delete 33,000 emails while having been subpoenaed to hand everything over. Don't you think this whole thing will then be relitigated again? I, I don't think we have enough time for it to be relitigated, but I do think this is interesting. The fact that the FBI director five months ago said this was fine and now comes back today and says it's a problem makes it difficult for them to make as strong a case as they need to make to the American people. The American people are looking at this and saying, OK, this is bad. We never trusted Hillary Clinton. What did you just figure out now that you didn't know five months ago? That's the only thing that the Clinton campaign can work with. But again, Trump would have to take advantage of this, and that's going to be difficult for him given his own baggage. You know, initially, I was going to speak to you about how we had information from the Federal, Federal Election Commission yesterday that suggested that Republican donors have already switched all their money to the congressional races. They've right. given up on Trump. Trump himself is no longer giving money to his own campaign. Yeah. But it's not over, though, is it yet? No, no, it's not over. And this is something very important, I think, for a lot of people to remember. This is the first American presidential election in 50 years without the Voting Rights Act. There are all sorts of actions of, of voter suppression going on in North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas. We don't know what could happen at a state level. We don't know what kind of protections people are going to have. So even if the polls seem to look good, and the Clinton campaign certainly seems to feel that they're very confident given where they've been campaigning lately, no one knows exactly what these numbers could look like in 10 days. But can you make any predictions? What about Congress? We have this, the general, the general theme we're getting from pundits in D.C., who right. we must say have been wrong consistently, yeah. uh, is, is that uh, Clinton will get the White House, they'll sneak a Senate victory, the Republicans will retain the House of Representatives, gridlock begins again. Is that basically what everyone's saying? Yeah. I, but can we say anything? Uh, yeah, I think we can say that with fair confidence. I've never thought that the Democrats were going to retake the Senate, but you don't have to retake the Senate. If the Democrats gain two or three seats, if they gain a seat in Wisconsin, if they gain a seat in Florida, if they gain a seat in some other places, two or three seats is enough to basically make the Senate tied as far as practical politics goes. The House is not going to change until the next census in 2020, uh, and Hillary Clinton seems very likely to win the White House. But, again, anything could happen. <laughs> Why does every conversation end like that? Yeah. Professor Johnson, thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to see what the, the fallout is, but this is a very bad day for Hillary Clinton. Sheehan Bertanzi, thank you very much.